Wrench Crew Music Podcast Series Number Two, doing a review of. Oh boy, I haven't done this in two weeks, so I forgot what my fucking intro is. Uh, basically, just listening to and reviewing uh, entire band's discographies. We're currently doing "Bring Me the Horizon," and we are on their 2013 release, "Simp Eternal," uh, which is where I'm sure most of you these days know. Uh, the the fucking Giga Chad meme from we'll we'll get to we'll we'll talk about that song don't 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 you worry we'll get there um but yeah this is the last Bring Me the Horizon album that I really like listen to uh, everything kind of after this I, not so much uh, th- this is the last one that I've listened to all the way through the other ones I've maybe heard a track or two there and never really went to the went to the albums um I remember this album being like pretty good uh so we'll we'll see if it holds up or not let me pull up some background info on the album see if there's anything interesting that i can kind of go over here uh fourth studio album blah 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 blah. uh yeah nothing really notable to mention here um so i won't so with that i guess we can get started uh track number one and you feel my heart. Mike is scuffed, so there's no music here. I, I think this this song is uh is, it's a it's a big meme. It's the it's the Giga Chad meme, and that's why everybody knows it. It's it's a ha funny. But honestly, uh, there's a lot of synth, uh, and it just it just sounds really well put together. Like it just it's it's super super catchy, and and, and it's an enjoyable song. Really easy. I love I love this one. Uh, I love this one a lot. Uh, this was. Probably, honestly, one of the, like, one of my first, like, really, like, big favorite Bring Me the Horizon songs that I heard since I got into them around this time. Um, And I just, I really love the, like, this album is definitely the most accessible that they have made to this date, I'd say. Um, Or uh, up to this album, this is, this has been their, had been their most accessible album. and I feel like we can also start here in that Ollie has uh, starting to learn to not kill his voice when he sings slash screams. It, it, you can hear it and it doesn't sound super painful this time. Um, I really love the transition there from the verse into the chorus there. It's like those first two lines almost feel like more of a pre-chorus than the chorus itself. This is a really uh, catchy song. And yeah, of course, Giga Chad. I mean. Yeah. Um. Great way to start the album, I think. Just kind of coming, coming hot right out of the gate. Uh, I really like the the sense, the glitched vocals there. Um, yeah, I I don't know what else to say. It's it's a good song. It's great, and uh, yeah, memes, ha ha, funny. <laughs> uh, so we can move on to a track number two, House of Wolves. Show me a song. Right. Uh, I fucking love this song, dude. It's just like I'm I'm this album was written about Ollie getting better, getting off of drugs. Right. And then just the second track is just, yeah, you know what? Fuck God, too. And, and it just, <laughs> like the principle of the song really makes me happy. Right. Um, but it, it's also like it, it's it's a nice mix of like that that metal kind of grindy sound that they've done in the past stuff that's more melodic there's a little bit of synth still in it like this is just a really good blend of all of the sounds we've gotten from bring me the horizon like i absolutely adore this song it's everything i love about this band yep uh this is this is one of my favorite songs that they've done and also probably one of my favorite breakdowns like in metalcore uh th- there's something uh, there's something about this hits different when you're sitting when you're in the pit this this one this this breakdown hits fucking different and a uh, funny story about that the one time that i got to be even close to the pit for this i got a boot to the back of the head from a uh, from a crowd surfer during uh, during the breakdown there so that was fun uh but uh th- it was still an insanely good fucking time and this song is insanely cathartic especially if you have any sort of like issues with religion <laughs> i'll just put it with that uh this this is a very very fun song and i like this one a lot i forgot about this one uh yeah this is it's fucking great um not really a whole lot else to to say uh outside of what you guys have already said like 
it, it goes hard as hell. The song's great. All right. So, track number three, Empire. Let them sing. Let them sing. Uh, there's something like inherently big and powerful about this song. Um, I, I'm not sure that I can quite put my fingers on it, but there's like big grandiose vibes to it. Um, it it's another one that like just goes pretty hard. Uh, vocals are good. The guitar is really clean. Everything just really flows together. Uh, it, it's a big track and I like it a lot. Yeah, I don't really have too much from more to add other than that. This is a really uh, just clean, like almost epitome of metalcore essentially with a really nice bring me the horizon breakdown that is always wonderful uh yeah it's really good yeah um so far three songs in um nothing really negative to say so we'll see if the rest of the album holds up so track number four uh sleepwalking so i i love this song because it's just super powerful um, there's a whole lot that like you can really tell that Ali's going through stuff and it's not the same as like in previous albums where it was anger or disappointment or like j other negative emotions like this one seems really like self-inflicted uh, you know really really self-deprecating right and and just like the feeling of drowning uh, and it's 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 kind of a neat song it's a little bit slower than I guess what we're used to for Bring Me the Horizon but it's still a really good track. Yeah, this this is a little bit slower for them, I'd say. Um, and I just I fucking give Jordan Fish, uh, the keyboardist, programmer, backing vocalize, bo backing vocalist, synthesizer. I, I fucking love his synths and like his work on their more electronic side of it. Um, I love the beginning synth. It's so like melodic, which I, it's so melodic. But then we still go into you know breakdowns and some really like yeah powerful fucking choruses and it's it's a this is also i mean this isn't the beginning this song specifically this album i'd say is when ollie like does legitimately take his lyrics more seriously than just you know throwing shit into a hat and pulling it out and hoping that it sticks or misogynistic shit so yeah uh very very large step uh ahead i think at least for his uh lyrical ability yeah, definitely a more serious shift on this album. It makes sense considering a majority of the subject matter here. Um, but we're, I'd, I'd say, four for four here. And just kind of looking at the track listing, like, I I have a feeling that this album is probably going to rank pretty high, if not number one by the time we're done. But again, we'll, we'll, we've will we still got, like, what, three, four more projects to get through after this? So we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do think that this one's going to be up there for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so track number five, Go to Hell for Heaven's Sake. This one I love again. Uh, the pacing, I think, is super special here. It's it's upbeat enough to keep you engaged, but it's still more themes of like self-deprecating and, and just really not liking the person that you were. And I, I don't know, this... it. it I think it hits all the right spots just because of the, the speed and the cadence at which it goes. Like everything just really feels well blended, well produced. It's it's another really good track. This this album just keeps hitting all the right spots. Yep. Um Ollie and his and all of Bring the Horizon are just like continually showing their like evolving songwriting ability because like they have very almost seamless transitions between the different components of the song and they have honestly really amazing mixing and producing behind them. Uh, everything sounds so sharp and clear. There isn't like, like on the other albums where we might hear the drums or the guitar drown out Ollie or or vice versa, where Ollie's screaming takes over the the guitar and you it just mushes it out. But here we hear them in kind of their most clean and like most refined, I'd say, um, and. This is also just a really another like deep song that Ollie put in a lot of effort into that he I didn't realize it before. I mean, I could you can get the themes of it, but I didn't realize that he wrote it like directed towards himself. Uh, it's it's a very interesting song, and I, I like this I like this one a lot. <laughs> 
I really like the the sense on this that you kind of hear at the beginning and kind of through parts in the middle. Uh, really, just I don't have anything bad to say about any of the songs we've listened to so far. Like everything has been really good. So I, I like I said, I expect the rest of the album to also be as good, but we're we're not quite done yet. So move on to track number six, Shadow Moses. <laughs> All right. Um, this is another one that just kind of like brings in all of the elements about Bring Me the Horizon that I love. Uh, the synth is really good. That gang vocal kind of like harmonic sound uh, as backup vocals like serves as like a carryover of all of the last album that was really good. Um, and again, the metalcore sound is just kind of flawless in this. Like it's everything that you'd look for from a Bring Me the Horizon track. Like they, I honestly, this is easily one of the best songs that they've ever done. Um, everything just really flows together. It's really smooth, really solid, like mechanically good. It, it all the pieces are there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Another perfect example of just bring me the horizon, continually evolving. I have to say that whatever that guitar sound is after Ollie says fuck and is I, I don't know how to describe it but that that fucking guitar sound just itches a part of my brain that I just fucking love um yeah this is another really good fucking song this was I mean this was their lead single which I mean it makes sense um they really went all out on this song uh and uh uh, uh, this is Sep Eternal. Uh, this is Sand Pit Eternal. Uh, I, I fucking love. I, I love it. I love it so much. I love the pronunciation of it. Yeah, I, I'm looking in the genius annotations, and I, I guess a lot of people thought he was saying Sand Pit Turtle, and mm -hmm. that's that's hilarious. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, the song, the song's great. Uh, that opening kind of chorus bit that you hear at the very beginning and then again at the end is directly from Metal Gear Solid 1. That's, that's all over that game. So I, I appreciate the, not only the, the, the reference with the title, but also putting in like a melody from the game as well. Song, <laughs> song's great. Love that. <laughs> uh, track number seven and the snakes start to sing. And the snake starts sing. All right, so they really slowed this track down. It, it, it's not a bad track, I guess. I just I don't like where it falls in the album. Um, you know, we get a bunch of like faster, more powerful songs. There's a lot of like thorough energy in this one. It, it still has the passion. It's still a good song, but I guess just I don't like the way that it follows up Shadow Moses. It's not a bad song. I still enjoy it. It's still really well done, but it just kind of falls in a bad spot for me. Yeah, I'm not sure how much else to, to add to this one. Um, Ollie's lyrics are very deep. Again, he this whole album is just him showing a lot of like vulnerability and just like pain that he caused himself and pain that he caused other people. And it's it's um it's very it's powerful lyrically, I'd say more more so. Yeah, I still liked it, but yeah. Uh, I was reading an annotation on the Genius page that the lyrics basically mean nothing to anybody other than maybe Ollie and his parents because of just how personal they are. And just kind of skimming through, it's like, yeah, he, he was going through some shit, for sure. Um, I do have one complaint. Uh, this song follows up Shadow Moses, and the song is titled "And the Snakes Start to Sing." And I did not hear Solid or Liquid Snake singing on the song. Uh, <laughs> false advertising. Uh, how could you do this? Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but in in all, in all seriousness, uh, the the song's okay. It's it's kind of weird that it's a slower song, and then there's like it's it's in the middle of maybe some like faster songs. I, I don't know. It might've worked better as, I don't know, an ending track. Maybe uh, we'll have to see what the actual ending track sounds like, but I don't know if, if, if you're going to go from like some fast stuff to some slow stuff, maybe like have it near the end or something or closer to the end rather. Uh, but yeah, track number eight, seen it all before. I 
I, I think that this is the closest this album gets to like a filler song. Um, it, it is a pretty decent bridge between the slow one and the last track and the upbeat tempo of the next one. Um, but to be honest, it's just a whole lot of chorus. I don't feel like there's as much substance in this song as there is in others. I just, there's not a whole lot to this one. It's just kind of there for me. Yeah, this one definitely feels like 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 more of a filler track or or more so one that maybe Ollie was doing for himself, maybe. Um, it is a little interesting. They don't really have much of a, a breakdown in this one, so a little less metal quarry, but it, it still has a good um it still has a good tempo, a good melody. I, I really enjoy the uh the synths and, and Jordan Fish's continued work. It's it's still honestly one of my favorite synths and electronic uses in metal. Uh yeah, I, I the, this does lead into probably my favorite song on the album, or one of my favorite songs on the album that is very much more upbeat. So yeah, I would call this a, a decent transition from the last song into the next one. Yeah, uh, the song's not bad. It's just maybe like not as good as everything prior to that. I I guess um, it's since the last song was also kind of slow. It's this one's also kind of kind of similar deal. Uh, I yeah, I guess I agree. It works as like a transition to the the last half of the album here. Uh, not a bad song, just I don't think it's as good as everything else. All right, so uh, track number nine, Antivist. All right, um, I I enjoy this track. I I liked it since this album came out. I mean, it is just super cheesy super corny just just mosh like you know metal core just, just it's, it's pretty standard uh but like as i'm reading through the genius lyrics like this pretty much is hey fuck you twitter uh which is kind of my favorite thing in the world just mad at everybody and that it, I, I don't know i kind of like it yeah uh i mean uh, simple man all he says cunt i like song uh, but no, this this is this is another one of those songs that I got to hear live, and hearing Ollie scream at you to put your middle fingers up, I, especially because when I heard this uh, in concert was during the fucking sixteen uh, election, and uh, a, a certain orange fucker was up, and uh, uh, yeah, it was just middle fingers to him, and it was the greatest fucking thing in that concert that day. Um, this one is just so much fucking fun. Uh, that breakdown is just fucking metalcore and just so much fun. I also love the uh, the almost continuous build that they do from the pre-chorus into the chorus. Just the the almost overwhelming energy when the chorus starts is just cathartic. It's really good. I love this one. Yeah, it's just it's the Martian song. Uh, simple as that. Uh, which is. Which is good. Don't don't really have anything else to add. So we can move on. We're getting pretty close to the end here. I think this is the second to last track. Uh, Crooked Young. Uh, another track that I absolutely love. Um, the same thing that I said earlier. It's just a throwaway fuck God. Uh, Except this time, it's maybe you didn't get it when I said it seven tracks ago. <laughs> uh, it, another absolute banger. This one's this one's really good. The synth is good. The metalcore sound is good. Um, very clear, concise, straight to the point lyrics. I, I love this one. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, Ollie is pretty pissed at uh, a certain group of people. Um, <laughs> this is this is just a, another really fun uh, metalcore track that I just fucking love uh it's another really good song to mosh to i mean and bring me the horizon makes a lot of really fucking banger moshing songs also for the longest time i thought the the lyric fuck your faith was fuck your face and i was like huh i mean still ollie but this one this this makes way more sense uh yeah this is one that I remember back when I first heard this album, and I still think it holds up. So, yeah, still good. Not, not much else to add, really. So, final track, number eleven, "Hospital for Souls." I, 
I really love this as an end to the album. Um, the violin string kind of sounds just really tie everything together. The synth, the guitar, the passion, everything's there. And it feels okay that this one ends a little bit more slow and repetitive. Um, it's it's another really good track. I'm, I'm happy this is the way that they chose to end the album. Um, just a really good place to end. Yep, I I agree. I think this is a, a perfect song for them to end this album. I think it really just encapsulates everything that Ollie was talking about for for the majority of the album with his like addiction and his struggles with that. And yeah, I mean the the chorus, the the like the instrumentation that is not you know super common for for metal. It's the violins. It's I don't know what else to say. It's really good. I like this one a lot. Um, I don't know. This definitely does work as an ending, but I feel like it's kind of a weak track, honestly. Um, I, I just wasn't feeling it. Not that I, like, completely hated it. I just, it's another one that I just didn't really like as much as all the other ones. But I do think it that it fit at the very end of the album here, for sure. Uh, so I guess we can get into rankings so far. Um, I lost my, my little notepad thing that I made last episode. Whoops. So I have to make a new one, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I, I do think that this one for me sits firmly at the very top followed by, ugh, I know, I know I said this last episode that I'd probably flip flop between suicide season and there is a hell, but I think I'm going to put there is a hell second and then suicide season third. And then count your blessings last. That'll that'll probably flip flop a whole bunch. Uh, I still think. <laughs> uh, but I'll, eesh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty much with you on rankings, except I do flip Suicide Season and There's a Hell. Um, this album really struck a chord with me back in high school when it came out, uh, and it still sits in all the same places for me. Honestly, like. It, it does everything that I wanted to do. It's a really approachable, but still metal core sound. Uh, lots of passion. And like I said, Fuck God is kind of cool. Much like, you know, <laughs> only hears yeah. and he's like, good song. I, I hear Fuck God and like a good song, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. And they did it twice. Uh, it's, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really good album. Um, certainly one of my favorite albums of all time, easily at the top of this list. Uh, yeah, this this Sepitonal is definitely the top. I, I actually would have to say that I do mirror uh, Mike's ranking, probably. It's it's basically just in descending order with how we've listened to them so far. Sepitonal, this is a hell, suicide, counter blessings. Um, this, <laughs> this one is just so much fun, but it also refines a lot of what Bring Me the Horizon was already doing and just makes it better. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, uh, I do have a concert to talk about and a vinyl update. I have to go grab those, so give me just a second. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, I went to L.A. last weekend as of recording this uh, with my dad to go to Universal for Halloween Horror Nights. And we didn't get day tickets to the park, so we had free time uh, until we did go to kind of wander around and do whatever. So I went to Amoeba Music, and who boy... If I if ever a hazard to my wallet existed, it's it's that place. God damn, dude, they they have they have so many things. Uh, so I got the new JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown album, Scaring the Hose. This is probably my my favorite hip hop album to come out this year. This thing is nuts, man. I I love this album so much. It's 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 wild. Uh, I also got uh, Young Lean's Unknown Memory, which we talked about in the previous music podcast. Uh, it's probably my one of my favorite albums from him. Uh, I mostly just really like the instrumentals on this. Uh, really, really aesthetic album. I also got his, Young Lean's first album, Unknown Death 2002, the the meme album where Anthony Fantano famously reviewed it by putting bread on his hands and saying his hands are bread for like three minutes straight. Um, <laughs> it It's an album. <laughs> uh, and then I also got uh, Exeter by Blade, which is one of my favorite kind of later albums from him. So very cool to have some uh, Sad Boys and Drain Gang stuff. Hell yeah. Uh, as for as for concerts, uh, I had to miss a couple because I caught COVID 
and one of them sold mm. out. Uh, I was going to go see Tool this past week, but that sold out, and uh, I had no money. Uh, mm. Actually, correction, it was almost sold out, and the only seats left were like 120 bucks, and there was no, mm. no way. Uh, I also missed uh, seeing George Clanton a couple weeks ago because I had COVID, and I'm really bummed about that. But I did get to see Death Clock and Baby Metal. Um, which was an interesting show. Uh, I guess the guitarist for All That Remains has some, like, solo stuff, and he opened, uh, kind of more progressive metal instrumental stuff that he's doing, which is pretty cool. Uh, he has a track with the vocalist from Periphery, uh, that he played, which was, which was really solid. Uh, Death Clock themselves came out second, and, of course, it's Brendan Small, the lead writer for the show. He has... Uh, a, another side project called Galacticon. Um, he does the vocals and some of the guitar for for the show Metalocalypse. Uh, and then you had uh, who who is it? What's his name? What's his name? The drummer guy. Oh boy, he's in Strapping Young Lad. Fuck, I know this. I, this mm, Gene Hoagland. Yeah, he plays drums for for Death Clock, and it was cool to see to see him live. That it was wild. Uh, so they came out, did the intro to the show. And then you can't really see them the way that they have the lighting. I assume this was intentional. Uh, they just kind of appeared as, like, silhouettes on stage. And Brendan didn't really say anything until the very... Until, like, the second to last track. Um, where he was just kind of doing the voices for, for Nathan and, and Squiscar and Pickles and stuff. Um, which I guess was neat. Uh, didn't really directly address the crowd, I guess, traditionally. So I guess in a sense, this is the second band other than Death Grips I've ever seen that doesn't really talk to the crowd much at all, which I, I guess is fine. Um, but yeah, they mo they mostly played a lot of songs off of season one. Uh, they played, I think, maybe one song off the new album, uh, one song off of Doomstar Requiem. It, just kind of like a mix of stuff, but mostly season one stuff, I think. And then Baby Metal came out last. And what a what a just surreal experience. <laughs> Baby Metal is just basically an idol group that just happens to play metal. So, like, they're doing, you know, idol group dances and stuff with, like, this hard-as-hell metal backing track. And it's just really bizarre to see a Western audience be really into that. I, I I just sat there in awe the entire time. Like this is a thing that I am experiencing right now. What in the fuck? It it was a yeah, good. It it was good though. It it was good. Um, I've been, I've been sleeping on baby metal for real. Need to need to go back through and listen to listen to their discography. Yeah. Um, but that's all I have as far as concerts go. I did I did want to mention because I think this got announced this week. The lineup for sick new world next year in las vegas uh nice. th this looks this looks nuts i i'm going to pull this up so that you can see it and this is probably going to mess up what what shows up on on the the recording but that's fine you need to see this uh so system of a down slipknot perfect circle allison chains bring me the horizon primus swans uh ice nine kills uh, I think I see uh, Lorna Shore in there, Lamb of God, Baby Metal, Polyphia, Static X, uh, Combi Christ, Fear Factory. Like, th this looks... Slaughter to Prevail. This looks... Say, everybody says that Knocked Loose slaps live, too. The only oh, time I saw them, they sucked, yeah. but apparently they go hard. <laughs> nah, yeah, when I saw them live, they were, they were really good when I saw them live. What else is on there? And somehow they're doing this oh, in is down there. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Some somehow they're doing this like one day. What? <laughs> Holy shit. What? Like actually? Yeah, it just says Saturday, wow. April twenty seventh. How are you having this many bands in one day? Code orange tea. Yeah, this is like a Cuba. This is like a two day fest at least. What the fuck? Wage war. Ah, there's a lot of bands on here. Like You're not gonna see a third of these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like at best you miss you miss two thirds. Yeah. Crazy. Those other, I wonder if any of those other festivals I liked to go to or posted any of their shit yet. Now, what was that fest you went to this year? Uh, Louder Than Life. Louder Than Life. I can't remember. There was another one. Oh, it was... Um, Did you hear that Blue Rock Blue Ridge Rock Fest was like a shit show this year? 
I had heard that, but I hadn't seen it. I knew that they had canceled one day of shows and weren't refunding people because of, I don't remember whether it was weather or technical or so- something prevented one day of shows, and that was... Oof. See, they, they quoted saying it was because of um because of the weather, but then the day came and it was like just a little cloudy with no rain, no thunder, no lightning, nothing. Apparently they were like really disorganized. <laughs> Yeah, Jeez. I had a couple friends go to that, like friends of friends who I follow yeah. on social media kind of thing. And they're just like, yeah, there's nothing to do today, but we're here and we paid for tickets. God damn it. So we're here. <laughs> oh, my God. Wild. Uh, yeah. So just looking at my my calendar here, we're, we're pro- uh, probably this isn't happening for like another two weeks, but uh, Tesseract is coming my way, and I am very excited for that. Uh, there are there are VIP tickets for this where they're doing some kind of like smaller show just for the VIPs before the actual show. So uh, I'm I'm very excited to finally see those guys. I think they're coming to piss. I think they're coming up here too. There's a lot of people that I'm to try and trying to see the next couple of months. I have to look through them all again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but other than that, uh, I got nothing else. So if you guys got nothing else, uh, we can wrap up. Yeah, nothing else. Alrighty. So next week we will be doing, uh, that's the spirit, I think. Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah, we'll catch you then. See you.